From a political rendezvous last week, it's a personal one tonight with Sachin Pilot and his beautiful wife. The pairing is emblematic. Farooq Abdullah's daughter and Rajesh Pilot's son. Tonight, it's a rare glimpse into the private lives of a remarkable couple in the world of politics. Sachin and Sarah Pilot. Just let your thoughts, your thoughts your and dreams, dreams unfold. You and I, let's talk of love, talk of love to tales me. Tales untold, speak, speak to me so I can see your soul. Sachin, hi again. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi. I'd seen your photographs, but I didn't know you were so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> this is your first television interview? Yes, it is. So I'm a little nervous because I haven't done this before. You'll be wonderful, and I'm just so happy it's with me. No, my pleasure. You come from a grand dynasty of politicians that have ruled Kashmir. The Abdullahs. Your grandfather, father. Did the proximity of, to politics, did it fascinate you or was it a deterrent? You know, we grew up with politics. There was no other conversation in our house. Whether it's the breakfast table, whether it's the dinner table, it was always about politics. Even if I, when I was small, even if I didn't really know what was happening, mm. it was all around. Yeah. So you just grew up with it. It becomes mm. so much a part of what you are because that's all you've known. Was politics the, the topic of, uh, at your dining table when you were growing up too? All the time. Both my parents were in politics. Yeah. So I, I grew up with it as well from so the very beginning. And were you aware of all the vicissitudes, the conspiracies and the betrayals that were part of the Abdullah history? You know, yes, but we were also very protected, I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother kept us in a, as normal a life as she could. Yes, of course, you're told, you know that, and you're proud of what your grandfather or your father has done, no doubt. It's, but it's not constantly rubbed in your face that, look, you're really different or you're really special. No, we were just normal children. We used to have our pocket money and go down to the shops and it was one book and no more. <laughs> you know, you can't have anything else. Of course, later on when there was security and this and that, it mm. got a little bit harder. So. And not only that, it was a very turbulent time in the fami family. Yeah, absolutely. Constantly. Did you ask questions? Then? To be honest, no. I wish I had. I mm. wish it was now. Yeah. You know, in those days, I was still too busy with my Barbies and, you know, with my cartoons. And Where did you grow up? I grew up, I was born in Kashmir mm. and was there till about 1990 mm. when things got really bad. Okay. So, you know, about the first 12 years of my life were absolutely in, in Kashmir. And then after the age of 12? In England. But so would you say in a way that politics was in your blood? I guess it is. It yes. is. Yeah. Because you understand it. You know what it's all about. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I feel Sachin is a lot better. He's a lot smarter with politics. I'm still naive. He knows. He understands yeah. when someone's saying something, what they really mean. I still tend to take things on face value. Probably too many years in England and, you know. So it's, having grown up in England, do you find a lot of difference between the political system there and here? In England, Politics isn't so emotive an mm, issue. Too true. People don't sit at parties and really talk no. about their local MP. And no. I mean, here everyone knows the MP from every other state. Here in India, they can rattle off the ministers who's doing what, yes. where. So it's it's a much We're more. We're obsessed with it's, it. Yeah, it's. You both got married just a few months before your elections. That's correct. How long did you know each other? Before we got married, about three, three years three properly. Years, yeah. Where, where did you meet? But I'd actually, uh, I've known her family for many, many years, but I didn't know Sarah personally. I mm. uh, knew of her. But I think we met about five years ago, and uh, then we kept in touch. And uh, she, I was still doing my master's. Sarah was in college in England. I finished yeah. my master's, and I came back to Delhi. And, she and was, I was in England. She was in England. So how did you get to know each other? On the phone, emails. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Which was great. We used to have these long conversations and the phone bills used to be going through <laughs> the roof. But it always <laughs> happens. <laughs> always. Uh, it's I a lot cheaper now, I think. Yeah. yeah. It'll get cheaper too. In Hopefully. The future. Hopefully. Mm. Your kids. Yes. <laughs> we'll have Lucky us. Free. <laughs>
So did you know that Sachin would be in politics when you met him? <laughs> Well, I didn't know myself, actually. He didn't, so know. He didn't know. And, uh, well, of course, I was convinced he would. <laughs> and I remember asking him very early on that, listen, I'm not sure about this whole politics and getting married to a politician, and I've seen it from, you know, close quarters. From the inside, yeah. Yeah. So, and he said, listen, you know, I'm doing my MBA, and I haven't been working <laughs> so hard just immediately to get into politics. You know, maybe in a yeah. few years, maybe in a while. I said, oh, okay, fine. But... Um, like you said, within a few months of getting married, he... Um, so then how did you feel about it? You know, I was fine with it. That is his choice, and I respect that. Honestly, I think he could have done things much more for his personal gain, something mm. that would have been paid wonderfully well in New yeah. York. Or Some London multinational. And, absolutely. So uh, this was not the easy option. No. So I didn't want to be the person who was standing there and telling him, don't do it. For yeah. him then in five years or ten years to resent me. For sure. That because of you, I didn't get to do this. So um, there were no false pretenses. Mm. It was never that, oh no, Sarah, I'm never going to get into politics. And then he did. What role do you play in his political life? To be honest, I don't play any role. And that was a conscious decision for me. Mm. I, I have a job, I do my own work with the UN and I work in the UNIFEM, which is their women's fund. Or because but you they did thought campaign she had, with him. I campaigned with him and it was wonderful. But I feel, you know, he's doing what he really believes in and I'd like to do what I really believe in. You know, to, I need to mm. learn mm. also, you know, and I need to have my own experiences mm. rather than just clubbing everything with Sachin. It's great now because, it's you wonderful. know, we come home in the evening and he tells me what he's been up to. I can tell him about my work and my mm. colleagues and what I'm working on. Yeah. And it's so much more interesting for both of us. Tell me something, the fact that you come from different communities and religions, did, was it, did that make things at all difficult? You know, religion, caste and, and all that, it, you know, it has its own significance in this yeah. country and, and we all of us respect that. But I think it should not be the only factor that one has to keep in mind when you decide important things in your life. Mm. It's, religion is a very personal thing. You know, what religion you follow, who you pray to, what your beliefs are. And I think we should, you know, let it remain within the boundaries of our homes. I absolutely agree with you. I've always said this. I said my religion and my prayers are so personal. And it's nobody's business. Yes, absolutely. Really. I'm very lucky that way. And the family home that I've come into, you know, obviously there's a difference. I come from a Muslim background, mm. even though my mother is English and Christian, but still the upbringing was Muslim. Mm. And yes, I have married into a Hindu family. There is no doubt about that. But my mother-in-law, for example, I am so lucky she exactly believes this, mm. that her belief is her belief and mine is mine and she will respect, respect mine. You know, on Eid, if I want to call people for lunch and make savia on Christmas, put my Christmas tree up, she'll help me decorate it. And on Diwali, we celebrate and I'll help her put the flowers and things. So we but have a lot, no lot many more festivals to celebrate. Yeah, lots of festivals has. and it's lots of fun. Mm. And yes, I will sit with them when they're praying. And, but there's no pressure that you have to do this. No, I enjoy doing it. Like you said, it's in your heart. It's what you feel. I think you both represent a very important part of what India should understand. That it is a secular country in the end. Sure, because you know, whatever you may say and talk about, it's when, it, when you do, when you take an action. I heard someone say this once. I hear, I forget. I see, I remember. I do, I understand. You know, so it's only when person experiences or does something, it's when you really understand uh, you know, what the meaning of it is. Mm. Quite right.
So when you decided to marry each other, was there any uh, opposition from your side? Well, I'm sure you know yeah. all the things that went on. So yes, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was the easiest no. marriage, I admit. I mean, I think everybody knows that and there's no point pretending about it. Mm. How um, did you deal with it? Well, to be honest, I don't think I dealt with it particularly well, at least to start with. I sort of was just a wreck for half of the time and poor Sachin just had to pick up the pieces and even my family and friends, you know, I mean, it was, it was difficult and it's not this easy romance story, mm. no, you know, there are a lot of tears and there's a lot of mm. sort of heartache from all sides, I'm not just saying mm. from me, for my family also and for Sachin and for his family, mm. of course. Mm. And I knew and Sachin knew that we wanted to get married. You know, we tried to think of ways to do it differently or mm. let's wait, you know, maybe we'll wait two years, three years, we'll wait five years, you know, if that's mm. going to help. But then really, when we talked to everybody, it sort of didn't make sense. So we said, fine, if this is what we have to do, then let's just get married and let's get on with living our life and being happy rather than waiting in this situation where no one really knows what's happening. There's too much unhappiness and... Mm. You know, you don't want to continue with that no, for too much No, that's terrible. Longer. You can't live like that. No. Did they know that you were seeing such an... Oh, absolutely. Right from the beginning. And how did they feel about, about it at that time? Well, yeah. my father and Sachin's father were very close friends. and So the families have always known each other, or for a mm. long time anyway. Mm. And they've always liked Sachin. I mean, he's very nice. Mm. And, you know, he was taken home to meet my mother and all those okay. things. So, I mean, we... We did it the right way hmm. because I knew very early on that this was something very special. You know, it wasn't just a game. It wasn't just fun. Hmm. So I didn't want to lie to my family and to pretend and no, you know, this was far too important for that. Hmm. Did they object while you were seeing him? Not really. Not then. I think everybody just let us get on with it. But that's how it's always been with my family. When they, when they knew that you were going to you were serious about him, you wanted to marry him, is that when they... I think it's just the situation also around yeah, that time. Is. The things that were going on, the things that were being said and all that just creates this situation that was not there two years previously. And you know, Simi, I, I believe in destiny, you know. I, mm. I believe uh, things happen because they're destined to happen. Mm. And I and Sarah wanted to get married to each other and it's Ultimately, it's my life and her life, you know. Mm. Um, obviously, families play an important role and they will continue to play an important role. But I think the most important thing, uh, as I look back at things, is that she and I are both happy. Yes. And everybody around us who loves us is happy for us. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. No. There are smiles, you know, there's, there's love and affection. That's you true. Know, so and I they think must have seen that. Yeah. The most important thing is that me and Sarah are good friends and we are happy to be with mm. each other. And, you know, there's nothing more important than that. Mm. So once you have that, I mean, you know, everything else just yeah, finds Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, this I'd rather have it this way, where I'm happy in my marriage rather than have a huge wedding with millions of people or no controversy and then be miserable with my husband. For sure. I mean, so there is no question. Actually, yeah. I mean, in that sense, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm lucky I still have the love and support of my family and friends. And I have a great husband and in-laws and... Mm. And it's fine, everybody did their best at the time and everybody coped with whatever they had to cope with. Was it, was it difficult to cope with that, getting married without your family being part of it? Of course, extremely it for difficult. Girl, extremely. For anybody, I'm sure. I mean, even Sachin, if I told him, just come and get married without your mother being there, I'm sure it wouldn't have been his first choice. It's nobody's mm. first choice. And especially when you've grown up in a close family. Yeah. You know, we've always been very close. So. Again, I'm not going to pretend that, oh, no, it was a breeze. It wasn't a breeze. It was very difficult. Sure. But not just for me, of course, for my family also. But at some point, there was no choice. You know, this was it. And if I wanted to marry Sachin, then this is the way I needed but to marry him. brave of you. It is. But I don't know if we were thinking about it. You know, <laughs> we just yeah. wanted to get married. And yes, we're scared. And yes, we had lots of talks and late into the night. and But... It was like there was this little voice inside our head saying, we have to do this, yeah. come what may. And yeah, now sometimes I think, but how did we do it? I yeah. mean, how did we really do it? But we did. I really firmly believe, like Sachin was saying, God was somewhere over us saying, well, you two need to be together. And somehow we just 
came through it. And your families came around too. Yeah, I mean, touch wood. Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. It didn't take them long. No, I mean, and honestly, like you said, when they saw how happy we are. I mean, who wants anything else no. from their daughters or, or, you know, sisters or anything for like sure. that? You want to see them happy. So Whatever it is. Yeah. You know, there's no animosity, no one's grudging anyone anything. Yeah. But now we're happy, so there's no point sitting and saying, but you said this and I said that and he None said None of this. that happened. No. Why? I don't want it to be like that. Hmm. I don't want to live like that. I mean, I honestly believe that what's done is done. And we did get married, so, you know, there is a happy ending. Yes. So. And now things, how are things? Between? Fine, absolutely fine. Really, we're a family, you know, that's, family. that's families. Okay. There's up and down, tomorrow I'll have an argument with Sachin, and then day after we'll make up and... <coughs> Hopefully the same day. Or oh, the same day. Yeah. <laughs> you argue a lot? Not really. I don't think, you don't have time to spend with each other. Exactly, so... <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah. won't spend it arguing. No, exactly, and if we Try do, we to. sort of enjoy it. We're both, you know, strong enough people, so we have our opinions. There's no question, unfortunately, for Sachin of him saying anything and me just agreeing blindly with it. But it's fun. You know, we both give each other the freedom and the space to say what we want to. And, and if it comes out in an argument, it's okay. But then, you know, it's good to get your opinions out. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, sitting inside it and resenting the other person. And that's not healthy. That's true. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a fact. I've seen it. I've seen. My I'm wife. glad you said I've that. Seen my and <laughs> I've seen my own wife, and you know, it, it's so great that uh, you know we are very good friends. So mm. she supports me and encourages me, and also you know criticizes me. I play the devil's advocate when, with all the guys when, when I need <laughs> it. So you know, it, it's good to have that, and I think that support system. You know, it it really makes you much stronger to take on bigger challenges in life. Mm. But is there any agenda that you personally encourage him towards, that you feel strongly honest. about and say, Sachin, you must do something about this? Well, I feel very passionately about women's issues. Sometimes with Sachin, I will say, but you know what about this? Where are the women? You yeah. know, that's something that I definitely feel in this country we really need to push <coughs> on the agenda. You know, we are half the population. And I think we forget that all too often. Mm. You know, their needs, their uh, priorities, what do they want? Mm -hmm. I don't think we listen too much. Yeah. So that's one of the things that sometimes I, I do say to Sachin, you know, what about the women? What about the girls in your constituency? How is their education going? Maybe next time he goes to Dosa and he goes to a school, maybe he'll realize, well, yeah, where are the girls? And mm -hmm. you realized it also? Absolutely, I understand. Yeah, that. Mm. That's the key, that's the most important job of a politician, to raise the concerns, to, you know, uh, to bring, to bring those issues to light and to make sure that things are done. He is trying to make a change. My dreams and your dreams and the things that we want from this country, he's working on that. And I'm not trying to be politically correct because I'm not. But honestly, Sachin does make me proud. He, he loves this country so much. He's so positive and optimistic about it. It's, it's wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. So you are, I mean, you both are in your 20s. What, what, how do you enjoy life? What do you do? What are the things you enjoy doing? Well, I like watching movies. Bollywood or Hollywood? Both. And we go to the cinema pretty often. You go weeks, to a regular cinema? Mm, love it. Oh, Sit too. with the popcorn and mm. that's wonderful. We do that as often as we can. And who are your favorites? Well, Vaida Rehman, Nargis, Madhubala. And none of the new... Uh, They're all good. I think the new breed's also very good. No, no, now that's a very politically diplomatic <laughs> answer. <laughs> that's what he's no, Is he scared of mentioning no, 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 any no, of that, the new I, ones? You know, that maybe they'll stand. Like they did with your father. <laughs> Do you remember something about him and... He was supposed to have married Rekha. That's right. And he'd never even married? met Rekha. Yeah, he really? had something. I don't know about whether he's married. I have no idea about I, this. It came out in yeah, the headlines. So he was going to marry Rekha. And, and he says, the poor chap said on my show, he said, never even met her. <laughs> And Omar says, I was very happy because I was in college and everybody thought Rekha's going to be my stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what, what are the hobbies? What are the things uh, you do? Because he's a great shooter. You, uh, I used to be. I used to play. I used to do a lot of shooting when I was in college. And, but I've you know, kind well, of... He's been promising me for five years he's going to take me and teach me. But we still haven't got around mm. to that. So no, where's the time, yeah, Maybe Sarah. one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> we will, soon enough. I don't even know what to say to both of you. I think you both are wonderful. He's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> he is wonderful, I agree, but so are you. <laughs> I have no words to describe. Do you pay her compliments? Not as often as I should. Do you tell her how beautiful she is? Not as often as I should. <laughs> Why? I just said, I said I should, I just don't do it often enough. Once a day is not good enough, I think. Oh, we, once a day. We need to what do it. Nonsense. Don't just believe. We need to do it by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> For now, I don't want to give him a hard time. I really want to thank you both for coming on my show and for sharing so much with me. It was wonderful for us also. So Just make a great life in every way possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this round. Thank you. Thanks.